Hello everybody. Today we will discuss human reliability assessment. Today's presentation include introduction, steps of human reliability assessment, then different human reliability assessment methods and we will discuss two important methods, one is THARP and another one is HART. And this lecture is primarily uh, based on the material given by Kiruan 1996 and 1997. Um, also we, we consulted other books and papers, but most of the material we have taken from these two papers. So, human reliability assessment is part of human error analysis and here we will define human reliability as the probability that a person correctly performs some system required activity in a required time period if time is a limiting factor and perform no extraneous activity then that can degrade the system. So, you all know what is the def definition of reliability from the equipment point of view. From equipment point of view, we say reliability is the probability that the equipment perform its intended function <coughs> within stipulated period of time uh, given the specified work environment. It is similar here we are saying that instead of equipment, we are talking about person and as person the persons correctly perform the activities given to him and uh, at the same time does not perform any activity that will degrade the system and here time is a limiting factor and at the same time there are many performance shaping factors which ultimately control um, the human performance. So, that is what is the given environment. So, it is similar to the definition of reliability from equipment or machine point of view, uh, but context is different. Here human, human perform task and given time and other factors. So, <clears throat> so in order to understand quantify the human reliability, so you require to find do primarily few things. So, that is given here. One is that you must do a task analysis kind of thing and then you, you must know the what are the relevant task that is the operator or the worker is going to perform. And then you analyze those relevant tasks and, uh, and you, you concentrate on the relevant task what is important for performing the operation or the work. Then for every you may every ele task elemental task you find out the human error modes and <coughs> also find out the error causes and performance influencing factors or performance shaping factors very important because same person given to different situation where the performance shaping factors differ. So, the reliability human reliability will be different that means the error causing probability error probability will be different. And then, uh, then uh, you also require to find quantify the probability of human error you identify the human error modes then what is the probability of human error uh, human error on that mode which is known as human error probabilities. So, you require to find out the human error probabilities and then rest of the things are similar to any risk assessment methods that means the starting with the system description know the system and then what are the ta jobs and what are the how many people are there, how many people are doing the work and then and then after uh, reliability assessing the risk and then find out the risk reduction. So, all those things will be is important as, as per another reliability any kind of reliability studies. Okay. <clears throat> so, we will be concentrating more or more on these three uh, steps. So, there are typically 
so many human reliability assessment methods developed and HSE in 2009 they have classified this and they found out that there are 72 methods and and finally they found out 17 methods for for review final review and they they recommended that these 17 one 17 methods these 17 methods are uh, useful for the uh, high hazard situations but at the same time we uh, hse 2009 and as well as other papers they, they have give also classify the human error methods into three generations first second and third generations now the first generations methods are tharp hcr hart sli second generation athena uh, athena cream ads idac and third generation cosmo there is also some other like slim mod all those things we have not included here but if you go for the uh, any review um, of human reliability methods you will get plenty of uh, good literature and from there you can find out that what are the basic features of different generation methods obviously you cannot uh, create uh, clear cut distinction between between one generation to another there will be little bit of overlap but more or less these are the basic features so in the first generation uh, they consider regard human as equipment calculate human error probability by directly using traditional that equipment uh, probability calculation method that is such as event tree focus mainly on structural models and normal calculation methods to solve problems mathematically and do not consider behavioral science and psychology ok there will be debate that uh, whether it is true or not for the last point but more or less uh, most of the techniques do not consider this so those are first generation method or some technique which they have considered that is inadequate enough. Then the second generation combine behavioral science, psychology and other areas of scientific studies that is the advantage. Be able to describe the underlying causes of specific erroneous human actions and the context in which human error occurs. Be able to identify various kind of human error modes that might deteriorate the safety of the plant. Be able to quantify human error probabilities on the basis of error producing condition or context use uh, and this is this is basically the second generation and third generation basically use of artificial intelligence and simulation technique that is basically the clear distinction ok. So, <clears throat> although this so much of techniques are available so many techniques are available so we will not discuss all of them today we will see that tharp and hard today and how it is developed and what is the use of it. These are essentially simple to use, but if you consider the development phase, they, have, they are particularly very, very laborious uh, things. Okay. So, now uh, let us discuss that THARP. What is THARP? THARP is, THARP is human error rate prediction technique for human error rate prediction tharp technique for human error rate prediction so this is developed by swine in 1964 swine in 1964 for nuclear plants and it basically comprises of task analysis human error identification and quantification of human error probabilities then Swine and Gutman in 1983 they have given the complete picture of Tharp that how to do. So, there, there are four phases in the first phase is plant familiarization, in the second phase is qualitative assessment, third phase is quantitative assessment and fourth phase is incorporation. So, for any kind of st reliability studies or risk studies you know that the first part is obvious. So, unless you are not familiar with the plant and the operations 
and the jobs performed by the people there. So, you will not be able to find out the performance shipping factors and other things. So, this is this is of this is basically the prerequisite to this. Then when you are doing the qualitative assessment means you are basically identifying the uh, task and then breaking down into the relevant uh, elemental task and then from there you are basically developing the trees. These are the things what you are basically doing in the qualitative assessment. So, okay, so you will be developing event tree that is what the qualitative event tree. So, talk or walk through task analysis and development of trees, these are the uh, three steps which is to be done in the qualitative assessment. And quantitative assessment very important after qualitative assessment that assign nominal human error probabilities. It is very, very difficult to find out human error probabilities. So, given an elemental task and knowing the different error modes, what is the probability of doing the error or con making the error for that elemental task? It is nominal human error probabilities. By nominal we are means so this is probably the minimum one and and uh, but if he, if the context changes or the performance shaping factors changes that 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 probability will be will be augmented or will be adjusted with the thing so nominal is that this is the base probability so mostly these are based on either expert opinion or based on some simulation studies or based on some experiment and particularly maybe the ergonomic experiment what we have seen in the uh, last class, I said that uh, from some generic error modes, some ergonomic experimental based error modes and then simulation based error mode and when you are doing all those things, you are also finding out the what is the nominal probability of con common or probability of commuting that that kind of error. So, this is the first step. Then estimate the relative effects of performance shaping factors very important. Then assess dependence, then determine success and failure probabilities, determine the effect of recovery factors. So, you committed error at the same time that error recovery is important. So, what are the recovery factors are there? All those things are discussed under qualitative assessment quantitative assessment. So, qualitative assessment then quantitative assessment. and then finally, here incorporation perform sensitivity analysis and supply information to system analysis. The person who is designing for designing the system, who is designing for intervention for them this information is very, very important. Perform sensitivity analysis is also important because there are so much of performance shaping factors. So, uh, changes with the factor condition. So, ultimately it may change to, uh, to the resultant reliability or resultant human reliability and if there is uh, some cases significant changes for small change in shaping factors, there may be significant change. So, all those things you have to understand and accordingly proper action must be taken. So, this is what is our tharp. Now, we will see little bit of quantification of tharp. So, as I told you that the starting point in the task analysis and then you make the tree. So, there are two issues uh, that means you are doing it correctly or doing it wrongly. So, here we are uh, this this particular tree you see that first one is A which is this the technician has incorrectly performed the task. Then technician has correctly performed the task. So, that means given a task the operator the technician the worker there are two outcomes either he does it correctly or incorrectly. So, that is this one is incorrect 
this is correct. So, that means there will be probability of correctly doing, probability of incorrectly doing it. So, then this is P A is incorrectly doing and P small a is correctly doing, the sum of the two will be 1. Okay. Now, then, <coughs> then come to this condition. Suppose it is correctly doing the first element task, then here probability B given A, what is probability of B given A? B given A means you see this small b, it is again correctly and capital B wrongly. So, in this manner, you, if you can see that what is the probability of S? Probability of S is probability of A, probability of B given A. Probability of S is probability of A, probability of B given A. So, it is A is correctly doing. So, correctly doing fast A and then again correctly doing. So, that because the you, if you see the accent tree, so elemental accent tree, so one after another it will come. First task followed by second task followed by third task like this. So, first one is done correctly, then second one is done correctly, third one elemental step is done correctly, then total correct total things will be done correctly. Okay. So, and this is the that is why we are interested to know that what is the probability that things are done correctly. Okay. So, this probability will be along this line, this line you will end and then this is the issue that probability of A correctly doing first one. Now, first one is correctly doing, then second one, so like this. So, this is the end probability is this, A end state is this success, this one. Then, because there will be success in one way only. And now, if you think of the failure, there will be many ways that failure will be there. So, that means that <coughs> then what is the prob error probability, failure probability or human error probability? that probability of A f which is 1 minus success, 1 minus probability of success. So, 1 minus P A into P B by A if I consider this even uh, accent tree. Then 1 minus this is nothing but this, the reason is this. So, P A into P by B by A, P A into P B by B by A, then P A into P capital B by A. P capital A into P capital B by A and P capital A into more small P probability small B I B by capital A. So, all those things, all those outcomes probability sum will be 1. Now, you got this. So, this one is 1 minus this is in a P A into P B by A, then 1 minus P A, so 1 1 cancel out. So, ultimately 1 minus this equal to this that is what you are writing here. So, the assign <coughs> now, <coughs> now issue is that what are the major component of THARP? First is basic error probability, then you require to have modifier, then dependence analysis and decomposition that is what earlier also we have said. Now, another thing you please understand the assignment of nominal human error probability given by Swan and Gottman in Tharp handbook. And it has been <coughs> proven later on also, maybe based on experimental and simulation study also, that what the probability given in this book more or less they are right for all practical purposes. So, that is why uh, this handbook is very, very important and there are lot of that error descriptions are given and their nominal probability the which is no, which is human error probability that is given there. 
and now you take that of the human uh, nominal HAP and then depending on the performance shaping factors you add on ok. So, let us see that how we can use it. So, <coughs> we have relied on Kirwan publication in 1997 I think it is in it is published in applied ergonomics. So, there are different kinds of errors that may happen is given with their nominal probabilities. For example, operator sets an incorrect calibration pressure. So, you, these, are, these are the list of that errors particularly from plant operation point of view operator leaves valve open at the end of task welder works on the wrong pipe. So, like this a huge list is given by Kir 1 and the human error probabilities nominal probability is also given. Second one the probabilities, third error description probabilities ok. So, <coughs> so you can now, once you are you are finding out the human error probability, so either means what I mean to say by showing this key to one this so many tables is that that this issue is a complicated issue for practicing engineers and so as a result it is better you should rely on the handbook or the or the authority who, whatever they have developed like key to one is uh, considered authority in human reliability assessment. So, whatever he has given, so you can use these probabilities, human error probabilities in computing human reliability. Then we will discuss now heart. Heart is designed at for quick study, quick and simple technique for quantifying the human error. Actually what happened a heart has given some generic task and and different error producing conditions and under such conditions what are the how the error will be affected probability of error will be affected that is also given by in heart. So, and if you go by the quantification process, you see that classify generic task categories A to H. This one we have taken from Kirwan 1996, where he has given uh, these steps. He says that classify generic task from A to H, then assign nominal human error probabilities, identify error producing conditions which are basically either error producing conditions or performance shaping factors. Then assessment assessment of proportion of assessment of proportion of effect of each EPC on the nominal HAP then calculate the final HAP. So, that means you are uh, you have two three things on hand one that you know that what are the different categories of task A to H and you also have nominal probability that is what is basically computed by swine and also from other studies. Then you have error producing conditions. So, there are I think this uh, in heart I think there are 38 error producing conditions are given. So, how those error producing condition or performance shaping factors will ultimately affect the uh, human error probability that uh, numerical um, values are given or the scheme is given. So, you have to just see a, uh, take one job, find out the task, find out the errors and, and then use the data given in heart and then finally, you calculate. I will show you that how we have done this one.
these are the <coughs> A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, A to H, the generic task A to H. And then the nominal human unreliability, human error probability given. This one is the mean value and this is the 90 percent bound, 5th to 95th percentile. So, that mean on an average the value will be 0 0.55 for this particular ta uh, that situation totally unfamiliar performance speed with no real ideas or likely consequences. Under this situation the human error probability will be 0 0.55 and this is on an average it will happen, but depending on situation it may vary from 0 0.35 to 0 0.97. So, we have to choose 0 0.55 or in between any value. So, this manner the A to H the generic risk. So, that generic risk categories are given some nominal probabilities. Okay. So, you straight away use this nominal probabilities. Then as uh, in, in, in Rosen book it, they have say it is written that uh, 38 error producing conditions are there or performance shipping factors are there, but in Kiru 1 they have listed 26 uh, error producing conditions. So, that means 10 another uh, error producing conditions are not listed. So, here we have taken from Kiru 1 and we are showing those error producing conditions. So, what happened basically unfamiliarity with a situation which is potentially important, but potentially important. Okay, which is potentially important, comma, but which only occurs infrequently or which is novel. So, if this is this case, then this will be multiplied. So, maximum predicted nominal amount by which unreliability might change going from good condition to bad. So, you have uh, nominal HAP. So, for this condition, it will multiply by 7. So, that is why under different error producing conditions, so there are different multipliers that is also given. Okay. So, it is available in heart. So, like 26. So, now what we will show that how the calculation is done. For example, let the task type is F. If the task type is F, what is the generic error probability or is nominal error probability HEP? That one A, B, C, D, F, E, F, this one. So, A, B, C, D, E, and F. So, this is our task type. So, that means restore or shift a system to original or new state following procedures with some checking. So, that is what is the task. The type of task is this. Then what is the average HAP nominal HAP 0 0.003. So, you have written this. 0.003. Then suppose the what are the error producing condition? One is inexperience, opposite technique, low moral. So, if it is inexperience, what is the maximum effect? Okay. Then assessed proportion of effect, and then you are basically calculating what will happen with the but because of this what is the ultimate uh, ultimate multiplier. So, if it is inexperience, so from the error producing condition you have to find out what is the multiplier. So, what you will do? So, if you see what is happening here?
Okay. So these are the these are the these are the I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So these are the probability values for for different A to Z task uh, type of task, and these are the error producing conditions. So what we have found out that inexperience, inexperience case is uh, like lead a one minute operator inexperience number fifteen. Then you have to multiply it by three. So operators this case this operator multiplied by three operator experience this one multiplied by three so this one so accordingly accordingly you just so multiplied by three and you are getting this one okay so anyhow uh, let us uh, complete this one. So, inexperience will give you this multiplier, opposite technique gives give you this one and low moral give you this value. You have 0 0.003 that generic error probability. So, generic error probability and then multiplied by the inexperience factor, multiplied by the opposite technique factor, multiplied by 1.12 that is basically low moral factor. So, all those small things ultimately leading to this value 0 0.036. So, on an average you can say that this is basically that 0 0.04 that is what is the human error probability. So, that means human error probability first you find out the nominal probability then multiply the error producing condition effect. So, how it is it is calculated? It is calculated in this manner. If the maximum weight is 3, this will be subtracted by 1 and then you must know what is the proportion of effect that will be multiplied and everywhere you are adding 1. So, this, this, is, this is basically the calculation. It is given in KIR 1 1996. Okay. So, then uh, I hope that you got the two techniques one is tharp, another one is heart. In both the techniques, it is basically the task is very important. In the first technique, you do the find out the elemental task and then find out that the all the task if it is done correctly then it is the successful task operation and then the probability of successful operation can be carried out and given the uh, unsuccessful of um, cases that will basically lead to the human error uh, calculation so it will be one minus success that is the concept part but again if you you will find out that the um, scientist and the engineers they worked and ultimately they found out almost all possible situations and conditions and then also come giving you the probability human error probability values. So, you can rely on those probability values because they are more or less working and in case of heart what happened. So, heart it is basically a technique which is easy to do for a quick human reliability assessment and there are uh, several situation that task situation is task types are created when under uh, and, and accordingly some probability values are nominal probability values are also given and then there are many that performance shaping factors which ultimately affect and a scheme is shown here that how to compute the multiplicative effect of each of the performance shaping factors or error producing conditions, then all those multi well things will be multiplied with the nominal error human error probability to get the final human error probability. Okay. So, nevertheless the planned, planned familiarization that job what is performed and how to break the job down to the elemental task level and what are the different performance shaping factors that is basically uh, leading to to the um, 
probability of errors committing or influencing the probability of errors committing. So, all those things is very very essential and you must make a team and do a thorough study on it and then use the handbook data and accordingly you take your reduction, error reduction interventions similar things. Okay, these are all uh, complex things, but simplified by our experts and hope you will be able to use it. Thank you very much.